Well, welcome to East End Park, Andy. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time since you were here playing. 79, I think. 79. 78, 78, 78, 79. 78, 78, mm -hmm. oh, 79, 80, 81. Oh. It's here a season and a half. Um, you obviously are well known for playing with Cowdenbeath and Dun especially Dundee United. Um, but you had been with Cowdenbeath um, prior to um, going to Dundee United. And as I, as I believe that Dundee United signed you because they had seen you playing here in the select game between Fife Select and Sunderland in aid of the... Well, I, I think there were... There were rumours that were after me about a year before that. And what happened, I think Jerry Kerr came to see that game. It was a Michael Collier disaster, I think it mm -hmm. was. And I was playing left back the first half, and it was George Farmers in charge, and Willie Callaghan was playing right back. And at half time, eh, he said to Dennis Jack, who was the Cowden Beath left back, he said he gets. Ready, Dennis again. And so I went to take my shoes, my boots off. And he, what are you doing? I says, well, Dennis is coming on. Jim Murphy, you come off. Uh, you're going up front. And uh, I can't repeat the word I said. No, no, I says to him, no, I says, I, I can't play up there. Inside left it was. And, he, and I used an F word. And he says, I'll do the F and then blind. And he says, you got to do what you're told. <laughs> so, and uh, I happened to hit the bar with one ink. Uh, and then I scored one for about 30 yards. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to tell a wee story about mm -hmm. that. I was wor actually working in Holbeath workshops at the time. They're no longer there behind the, the, the Ford at Holbeath. And I, I went to work the next day. Uh, and the boy, uh, my gaffer, was waiting and I handed my notice in. And the guys were saying, I were at the game last night. I said, Funny thing, I mean, it, a comfy uh, one thing. So I didn't pass the ground, but I said, I had to go for a message into the firm and as I was going back I looked over the wall I said the crossbar was still shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. but I'd been with Cowden Beath before. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there when I was the Cowden Beath Royals I played for underage. Mm -hmm. I signed for Cowden Beath when I was sixteen. It wasn't on S form, it was something else it was called. And they put I think it was five pounds a week. And at the end of the time, well, if you signed, you got the, the money. If you So I actually signed. I played in the Combined Reserve League at mm -hmm. that time. I think there were seven teams in it. And uh, I signed. And I got about three games in the first team, I think, something like that. And then uh, Harry Koval took over as manager. Mm -hmm. He told me, uh, and another famous player that played here, Tom Callaghan. Mm -hmm. Tom played with me under 18 that we wouldn't be getting a game because he'd be signing more experienced players but we could sit in the stand. So I says, no, that's no good. So I went back junior mm -hmm. and I went to England to work for uh, a year. Then I came back and Archie Robertson, he was the manager of County Beath that day. He was my boy's brigade leader years ago. And this, I was sitting on the wall at, at my grandfather's house in, in Longfinnings and this guy drove up. It was one of the degrees. And mm -hmm. he, yeah, for the, uh, the paper, and he said, well, Archie, you want to know if you'll come and play against Race Rovers? So I played the trial, uh, played the outside right, then I played another trial at Starts Park against Race Rovers, and then he signed me after the game. Mm -hmm. But I signed for Dundonald Bluebell, mm -hmm. because at that time, if you went uh, senior without playing junior, you couldn't come back again. Then, mm -hmm. when Harry got rid of us that time, I, just, I went to Dundonald Bluebell. Because they were good enough. To, I never played for them, but they were good enough to. And, and I go most Saturdays with my friend Alan there to see them. Okay. Yeah, the Blue Bell, yeah. Yeah. Aye, aye. I might have seen you there, well. Aye. Uh huh. I might have seen you. Um, not that I'm a Dundonald supporter, but I might have been there at one time. Um, when you went to, obviously Dundee United, um, you were well known. Uh, it was, it was it not right back he played? Yes. And you were well known for that. You had a fierce shot on you. Well, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> but when you came to Dunfermline, you had left Dundee United um, and gone to America. That's correct, yes. But um, I think there was a story at some point where I know it was Jim McLean had uh, liked people to stay in Dundee and the surrounding area. 
But you seemingly wanted to move back to Fife and you got suspended. I, the, we moved to Dundee. We moved to Dundee. Uh, Jerry Kerr was still the manager and I was saying, I think about moving up here. And I said, it'd be best if you do that. And then mm. two weeks later, McLean took over. Mm -hmm. sort of, I didn't know he was going to take over. But anyway, my wife hated Dundee. She loathed it. And my oldest laddie now, well, Paul's 45 now, but he was getting bullied at the school and things like that. And I went, no. And the car got broken a couple of times. And I went, no, I'm not having this here. So I had a brother who went to California. And he came from Manchester, he came up to stay in Glenrothes and I put down for a house. Never got it, never got it. Then I got, I sold my car and uh, I got the uh, Fife Council got in touch with me. They still still one house and so I went down to see it. So I'm still in the same house and uh, he says to me, Is your, I believe there's rumours that you're, I says I am, I says I'm moving to Glenrothes. No you're not, I says I am. If you don't move, You'll be playing on Saturday in Celtic. If you do move, you'll not be playing. So I just took the key in my pocket and wild in front of him. And uh, he went crazy. He suspended. I said, till when? Till you come back and stay in Dundee. I said, that'll be never. And then he went into the dressing room, I believe, and shouted to own up who it was that helped me to, to move. I hired the van, you see. It was Paul Hegarty and John Hope. And he crucified them, you know. And then I never won a game for about 10 games. And then they drew 3-3 with Air United on Saturday. And, uh, I think Henry Hall scored the hat-trick. Then I got a phone call. Uh, we'd, uh, we'd prepare to come and stay in Diggs, Tuesday to Friday. And uh, I said, I'll think about it. So I spoke to my wife. Uh, You're getting on my nerves. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I was actually always doing was playing badminton and five a side with the guys in the street. No training or nothing. And he says to me, he phoned up and I said, uh, so she says, just do that, I can't pass it. So I phoned them. Right, now what you have then, you got dig money and travelling expenses. I wasn't again either or or. So I says, oh, well, that's fine. Okay, no chance. Down the phone. Phone back two minutes later. You can get one or the other. I says, no chance. Then I got both. So, and then my wife was pregnant with my daughter. And Kerry just turned 40. And it was, uh, you can stay there till your wife has the baby, which was good, I'm not, you know. So I went and stayed in Diggs, you know, and I was staying with my roommate was Tom McCannum, who we went mm -hmm. to the shelter. Mm -hmm. So it was great, you know, for a pint at night, no wife on top of you and uh. So as I say we started getting a bit of trouble now and uh, we got the house and then she uh, I went back on the Friday to train just for half an hour and the park was brick hard and it was Dundee that uh, Dens on the Saturday and will you play? I said I and it was just a case of hoofing the ball, can we? Because you couldn't play football in the one. Mm -hmm. And before the game, can I tell the story? Mm -hmm. I, is it alright? Am I going on too much? No, no, can't So it. what happened? I was in the dressing room and I was like, all right, lads, as you told your wife to get the, uh, go and spend the bonus. But haven't they played yet? I says, Dundee never beats us. Can blah, blah, blah. I wish I knew the team, he says. This is McLean, so I said, I'll get the team for you in a minute. So I went, I went to the toilet and I come back and I told them the Dundee team. And he's looking at me. How the hell do you know that? I says, come on with me. Now, at that time in Dundee, it was old steel pillars, you know, the big, and it was mm -hmm. tiled. And there were a hole about that size in it. And I used to look through the, there to see their team when it was Jerry Kerr. And, I, and he couldn't believe it, you know. <laughs> and then we won. And of course he was there, I mean, he tried to shake my hand. I says, no, no. No shaking your hand because you'll begin to stick on Tuesday night. <laughs> so that was it. Okay? That was the story about that one. And then another story, to, uh, uh, we were training one day and he was away down to see somebody, Leicester City I think it was. And the Texaco well, Cup ties in at that time. And it was either Leicester or I I, Peter Shelton, Leicester it was. And uh, were, I was in the front with Hamish McCoppy and they warm up around the track and what he's missed taking the train. Uh, great game on Saturday. I says, no, no, it was at our broth. I says, no, no, according to him. I says, he, he knew that you knew you'd had a good game, so he was trying to think what you're doing. I said, but, so I went to see him when he come back. I says, look, I says, don't you ever do that to me again. I know when I've played bad and I know when I've played well. I says, if I've played well, if you want to praise me, fair enough. If you don't want to praise me, just leave it at that. But then he, he knock me when I have played well. I says, anyway, many times I have a bad game, can't. So, <laughs> 
But that's that's the kind of things they used to do, you see. Mm -hmm. But I, I wasn't happy about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after the United, you I went, went off to America yes. um, and played with... Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Uh -huh, and then you went to Los Angeles right, last uh, next year. And you played against George Best, was it? No, no. I played against... The first game was in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Played against a guy, I don't know if you remember him. Jim Steele played for Dundee. Mm -hmm. Wing half at that time it was. Played against Jim and a wee lad for Queen of the South. Oh, can't remember his name left back. Anyway, that was my first game. The first home game was the next week, 8 o'clock at night. It was 92 degrees, 93 degrees humidity against Los Angeles. And I was playing against Best. Mm -hmm. but Charlie Cook was playing as well. Two of them were steaming. I oh, know, I'm not, I mean, I mean, they had been drinking, you could smell it. And I got, oh, can't mind, $500 or something for being man of the match. Mm -hmm. Then this, Ron Newman was the manager. And they started, with, they've got that many people in mm -hmm. positions and this was the general manager and he wanted best to come to Fort Lauderdale. And there were a wee lad, George, or can't remember his name, and they trade us for George Best to come. We went one way and he went another. But uh, I, I learned everything before I went about across there. And that was the only thing my brother told me about, no, call it no trade. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't do that, but they, they could do that. So I said, just get my tickets ready. And for me and my wife and the kids were going home. Mm -hmm. But my brother was in LA staying, he's still there. So I went there, mm -hmm. but it was the famous Tommy Smith that was the manager of Liverpool. <sighs> Just didn't like him at all. And the team was rubbish to be quite honest with you. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Fort Lauderdale was the only player they know it was Ian Callaghan. He came for Liverpool. When I got there, Gordon Banks was the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. And when the corners came for that side, I had to watch. Because he only had the one eye. Mm -hmm. he, I, I, I know, that's no funny, Bonner, because he was brilliant for this side, but for that side, he would say, right, he used to call me Alden, Alden, watch him. And they, they got a guy, uh, somebody banks for, 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 for <laughs> you're laughing, it's a true story. Honestly, I swear, my mother's life is a true story. And he, he lasted about four games, I think, and they got this other lad. But Ian Callinger was a fabulous player. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I <laughs> We could be here all day. I thought you want me to tell stories. <laughs> tell you. That's, that's, that's the gospel truth on it. But playing against Pelly, Bettingbauer, mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Alberto, Captain mm -hmm. of Brazil, mm -hmm. played against them, eh? So you're famous? No, I'm not famous. <laughs> I'm famous in Long Finn. <laughs> Uh, so how did the move then come to Dunfermline? How did you come to Dunfermline? Oh, we were here right, when you contacted right, I, I came home, I was in the house half an hour i just come back from Los Angeles. After the season was finished, I stayed mm -hmm. six weeks with my brother because mm -hmm. my mother was coming out for a holiday, so I stayed because I wasn't fit. And I came home. And I was only house after I got a phone call from David Smith, mm -hmm. ex-Rangers. He was the manager of Berwick Rangers. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted me to go and watch them play in St. Johnson in the League Cup. I went up and they beat them. And I was really impressed with the way they played. That. So he offered me signing. And uh, of course, Bud Johnson, Wally, uh, Wally Matheson, come in the other one. If you get any money off him, get it in the money. Then he say, if, if he turns in and says, I'll give you such and such, such, I says, no. Because Davey's famous for gambling. You know, so I says to him, oh, I'm such and such. Then I got a phone call from Wally McLean. McLean mm -hmm. And I went down on a train with him. And this lad, uh, reminded Ronnie Duncan, the wee winger. Oh, he was a fat. They had a big game after the training and put him against them, you know. And, but unbeknown to him, I knew Ronnie, and Ronnie was a bit frightened of me. Yeah, and I was saying to him, if you go by me, I'll kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't right fit in that, okay? And then he offered me £500 to sign. And I went like, I said, what? I said, get lost. Then I, I got a phone call from... Who phoned me for here now? I think it was the famous Jim Drummond. All right. Jimmy, mm -hmm. he was in charge of the social club at that time, and then I met Mr. Yellowies, Doc, mm. uh, the, the lad that had the cafe, Jim. Jimmy Waters. Jimmy Waters, mm -hmm. and somebody else, and I said, Look, I've got no experience other than I can gain on experience that I met for Archie, mm -hmm. for Jerry. For Jerry, that's a, that's a bit laugh, but I'll tell another story. I said, and Jim, and that, you know, I said, I've been to the coaching courses now, yeah. So I said, Ah. And they said to me, Pat Stanton had said they would take the job, then he left to go, didn't even take it, he went to Aberdeen. So that's how I landed here. 
Because you came in when Harry Mayer was the manager and he was out. He was out, yeah. So you came in as player coach then, That's right, yes. Yeah, so, um, at that time, what was it like player-wise here? Because um, you played with the likes of, was it John Salton and Mikey Leonard and... Uh, when I was a boy, it was never a good one. Oh, no, <laughs> <That's all. laughs> it was, uh, I know, I got advice for Jim Thompson, God rest his soul, he's dead now, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about behind his back, he was Harry's... Uh, I, you've not to play him and you don't think in this, something like that, and I was like, but I was a wee bit perturbed at first, you know, because when I came on the Thursday night, uh, the first thing we're not here, I think they'd been playing someplace, just the reserves, and on the Saturday, I, w I went to the city hotel, is it? There's these guys that want to cook eating steaks and everything, and I'm like, ah, oh, jeez, it's suffering, what's going on, have you done it? Oh, the doc says it's all right, so, and it was cow and beef here, wasn't it? Uh, and uh, Jimmy Thompson did the team, again, but I just did a wee talk and I said to him all on the training on the Tuesday that salt and book again, uh, because uh, one of the guys who I thought was a great player, Paul Donnelly, I was mm. told not to give him a game, Jimmy Bowie, mm -hmm. and well, I just picked what I saw, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, so it was, we got humped twice for the Airdrie in the League Cup, home and away. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, we never lost a game for about 23 games more than mm -hmm. didn't we? Something like that it was. It was mm -hmm. something like that, man. Harry came back then. No say any mm. <laughs> But you, you were, um, <clears throat> I suppose, famous for scoring that penalty. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, because because that, that season we were vying with Falkirk to get promoted. That's right. Yeah. Um, and played them here. They went ahead. Uh, that's right, yeah. And uh, then we got a penalty. Correct. And you stepped up to take it, so mm -hmm. it was a bit. Um, I think for the fans at that time that was here, um, which I was one of them, <laughs> were thinking, "Oh no, please score!" Um, and it managed to go in the back of the net. Uh, well, the guy in the goals with Bobby McKell, mm -hmm. from he was at Nundee United when I was there. Mm -hmm. The big man's like that. He says, "I know where you're putting it." I says, well, I says, you know where I'm putting it. I says, if you, if you save it, well, I'm going to tell you what I said to him. I says, but you'll not get near it, Bobby. Okay? And, and I sent him the wrong way and I went on that corner. And mm -hmm. then uh, well, we're in the social club to be five o'clock in the morning, I think, that morning. <laughs> and, but uh, all my mates are up in the stand, okay? counting beast supporters. They were going. I got disowned after it for scoring it. They wouldn't really talk to me for weeks. <laughs> miss it, miss it. I was just saying to uh, Bona about the wee story, John Greve was mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and before the game he said if she's get promoted tonight there will be a crate of champagne for me. So I was in this half, and mm -hmm. I was walking that way, and it was the old concrete steps, and mm -hmm. he was standing in his cell, and as I was walking by I just went, put the champagne in the, the dressing room, <laughs> and I went anyway. So. <laughs> um, you were quite famous for taking penalties, the fact that you, you never missed very many. I missed, I missed one at Tannadies against mm -hmm. Motherwell. We got beat 3 2, and McLean said I did it all over. Like, That's true. I said, You did that. Up. Well, you kind of repeat what he said, but that was just, <laughs> just the, the done it all over. Like, mm -hmm. uh, that, and, and I missed the famous one at Cowden Beath, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Still get stuck for that, yeah, actually. <laughs> what, um, what was your time like here then, really? Uh, it was great, great. So I didn't want to go too deep into it. That was great. It mm -hmm. was great till, till Harry came back. Mm -hmm. and he started making changes and that. And I went to, uh, the guy just died there three or four weeks ago, Dick Donnelly's a reporter. I, mm -hmm. was, I was really friendly with Dick up there. I used to play cricket well for the, mm -hmm. the press team. Okay? Mm -hmm. I only fielded it, I didn't do anything else. And uh, we went to Breaking and we won six, one or six, nothing I think it was. We went back two weeks later, it was the two away from home, went at home. And uh, it was nothing, nothing. And before the game, he says, I'm going to freshen things up a bit. I'm like, you're not playing, you're not playing, and you're not playing. And uh, we drew nothing, nothing. And we got away with it. Very fortunately, we got a draw. Mm -hmm. And Dick said to him after the game, what's going on here? He says, we have to ask the manager, Dick. I said, I'm not coming. And then we lost at Alawa. We lost at Coat Bridge. And I can't remember what else. And then we drew away. Who did we play before that? One on the Sunday. 
it was a red hot day. We beat somebody one night with John Salt who scored with a penalty. Can I tell you a story about mm -hmm. that? Am I allowed to? Well, mm -hmm. I'm not allowed. I said he's got for ten minutes gone. I said he's got for a penalty kick, big fella. I can't. I, can't. I didn't get to four o'clock this morning. <laughs> Like that. John, you didn't tell me things like that. I said you were late. I said it was five o'clock for me to get up. Can okay, only wind them up. Like, and he scored with a header. I said you, you stay here the rest of the game. Who was it we played, Bona? The game before, there were two games to play. Mm. Berwick. It was, was it Berwick? Well, I can't remember who that game was, but we won one nothing. Mm. Then we drew with Falkirk, you know. But mm. I, I enjoyed it here, but. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know, just me and Harry just didn't hit it off too well. Okay? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but those things happen. Oh, of course they do. I, uh, <coughs> I, but, um, and have you got any comments about any of the players that you actually played with? <laughs> I, 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 honestly, they were great lads. Mm -hmm. there was one Saturday in his restroom room, and Hugh White got rested, so he says, hey, I've got a bit of a problem today. He took his jack off, he just took it on. He mended up with the sticky on it because the reserves are at Greenock. She went, oh, it happened two days ago. Why did you not get in touch with me? And of course, the language I was reading, yeah, big student, so I said, doctor, you'll never be a doctor, blah, blah, blah. It was a cast he'd got to the hospital and put on his arm to wind me up. You <laughs> 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 mended up, Bona. I was going crazy. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> That's the kind of thing, they were great lads, honestly, they were. They were really good lads. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you enjoy your spell coaching them? Oh, aye, aye. That was Preferably to play in or prefer or play in, was it? Did, playing better? Didn't he? No. But, but I was playing and coaching, so it didn't mm. make it. I didn't. Uh, then I signed for three months the next season because he asked mm. me, he says, oh, yeah. I says, well, we'll see where it goes then. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go into that side yet after, after three months I left, but I'm not going to go into that because mm -hmm. it was a wee bit. Mm -hmm. a wee bit. Well, where did you go after that then? Cowdenbeath. Cowdenbeath again? Yes. Aye. You've got this affinity with Cowdenbeath. Aye, I oh, no. <laughs> I went to Cowdenbeath. Paddy Wilson was the manager of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Paddy got sacked, the Pat Stanton came. Because mm -hmm. when I was at Largs, I, I worked a lot with Pat. I was playing against him, of course, a lot of times mm -hmm. at Tannadice. Then he left and then they made me the player manager there. And mm -hmm. we did really well and then I missed a penalty kick. <laughs> uh, but it was it was one nothing for them and it was one one. And then I missed a penalty. It was after about twenty minutes. And they scored about ten minutes to go. And it just it was a fluke goal. Mm -hmm. But um, Queen's Park it was in the week. Two weeks before we played them at Hamden, I couldn't have played a sword back. And I didn't go on with Eddie Hunter. I fell out with him and he was jumping mm -hmm. out of the shop. Okay? Mm -hmm. After the game, I, was, I fell out. <laughs> but uh, with the beers 2 1, that was it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then I started the next year for a wee while, and then I, oh, just, I got fed up with mm -hmm. I said, No, I've had enough. I kept playing junior till about 43 year old. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you must have been reasonably fit then to carry on playing junior? Oh, until I, I, I Well, I, I would be quite 38. I was about 40 when I was playing for Cowden mm -hmm. 40 when I stopped for Cowden mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, do you have any any regrets in your playing career or anything that harmed to you? Know? Uh, I could have made some better decisions, like when I was here. Mm -hmm. I should have handled it better. What happened? It was that's a private thing, but mm -hmm. I should have handled that better. Uh, when I played in that game the, against Sunderland, after the game, uh, I, I played on the Wednesday night as well for Cowden Beath. Oh, it was terrible. I played on the Saturday and the Monday. It was against them back and I was terrible and they signed me on the Thursday and when I got home for work there was a message left for me to go to Central Park. I saw the guy walking about. He looked like Lieutenant Colombo with this raincoat on it was Jerry Kerr. I'm Jerry Kerr, I'm down to sign you and there were nobody there. So anyway, Archer Rawson appeared and he says to me, look, we've had another inquiry for you. Don't sign, play for us on Saturday. And if not, the other club doesn't come back, you can sign on them. I said, what if I break my leg actually? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I signed. I said, who is it? Anyway, wouldn't he tell me? 
then after I signed he told me who it was interested at Celtic. Oh. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that when he came in and came, yeah. but they'd made an inquiry. Uh -huh. So, mind you, I got stuck for signing for the Celtic because all my mates are rangers of water, and so am I. <laughs> yeah, and so, but that could have maybe happened, but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I was in America, I, I could have went back the next year, but didn't I? Sort of maybe regret that a wee bit. Mm -hmm. But generally, yeah, I had a good innings, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who was your most difficult opponent? Never met him. <laughs> <laughs> Never met him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you had to beat an every wing and you were up against. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I'm trying to think you. No, honestly, I never. <laughs> Willie Johnson. Mm -hmm. But Willie said I was the hardest fullback he ever played against, but Willie was. Mm -hmm. Willie Johnson probably, mm -hmm. can for his speed and that, you know. Uh -huh. But you couldn't say, like say, Arthur Duncan, the hips, he was mm -hmm. faster than Willie. Mm -hmm. I say, Arthur, if you go by me, I'll kill you. <laughs> can that kind of thing, that's what goes on in the game, you know, but uh, you never said that to Bud, or me, Willie, you know, but I'd say Willie Johnson. Mm -hmm. you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I could tell you stories here all day, but what's in the game? <laughs> We'll need to invite you back and get some more then. Uh, I can make an epic. <laughs> um, all I can say is thank you very much You're for welcome. speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 just say it as it is, isn't it? You know, there's no point in you being... Well, I could tell stories on you here. Okay? Right, a wee, I'll tell you a wee quick one about Jerry Kerr. We were in Mexico, left Mexico, went to Holland, got stranded at the airport 15 hours. Went to Greece to play Panathinaikos and we were there about six hours before the game. We had to play at night and we were there for a couple of days holidays when Jerry said, come out and say, now don't try and ch change your currency in the hotel, go to the bank because you're getting, say it was so many to the pound, they said you're getting a hundred Draculas to the pound. Still <laughs> 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 We could be here all day, <laughs> if you want. <laughs>